Good evening, Upward families. It's a true joy and a privilege to be speaking to you by way of video at your Upward Awards Night ceremony. I trust that God will bless our time together. I would like to thank all of you who know about my condition, who have been praying for me. It means so much, and it truly blesses my, my heart. I would like to share with you tonight about the attributes of God. Of course, in John, 424 says God is the spirit and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth first attribute I'd like to speak about tonight is God's holiness Though all the attributes of God are important and depend on one another, the fact that God's holiness seems to be the one He wishes us to emphasize. When God revealed himself to man, each encounter talked about his holiness. Isaiah referred to God as the Holy One more than 30 times. Some 99 verse 9 says give praise honor and glory to the Lord our God for he is holy Habakkuk 113 says because of his holiness, he cannot accept or even look upon sin. Let's look at God's righteousness. Because God is holy, he is righteous. This attribute of righteousness is the way his holiness is displayed when dealing with human beings. First John 1 John 1.9 shows God's righteousness by forgiving our sins when we confess them to him. Next attribute is God's love. There is one attribute that people can understand. It is the fact that God is love. The word shows us his mercy, grace, and loving kindness. God is loving towards the people he created. He wants to share a personal relationship with us. 
First John, chapter four, talks about God's love. Not that God has love, but the fact that God is love, is mercy. But God's mercy offers a way of salvation by sending Jesus to die for us as sinners, which is recorded in Romans 5, 8. Sovereignty. God's sovereignty is how he rules his creation and does what he knows is best for us. God's unchanging by nature. God is absolutely unchanging. The attributes he possessed before creation are the same ones he has today. Psalm 90 verse 2 says that before anything was created God was eternal and existed the same way then as he is today. Malachi 3 6 says I am the Lord I don't change the Trinity this speaks of the Godhead while God is one he shows himself in three distinct persons God the Father God the Son which is Jesus and God the Holy Spirit the baptism of Jesus recorded in Matthew chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 show three persons of the Trinity God speaks as the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus Matthew 28 says we are to be baptized in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit in John 14 Jesus also said that he would ask God the Father to send the Holy Spirit as a comforter. God's present everywhere. God is present in all places, at all times. Well, God is in heaven, on his throne. He is also present in every place. through the Holy Spirit that lives in everyone who's put their trust in Jesus. Proverbs 15 verse 3 says that his eyes are in every place and he knows the good and the bad we do.
Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 23 and 24 said that God is close to us and that no one can hide from God. Psalm 139, verses 7 through 12, it says that we never can be out of the sight of God. That not even in the dark, God's all knowing. God knows everything. And his knowledge is complete. Isaiah 40, 28 says, God never grows weak or weary. And no one can measure the depths of his knowledge. John Job 3760 says that God has all knowledge. Psalm 147 5 says that God's understanding is infinite both in 1 John 3.20 and Romans 11.13 shows God to be all-knowing. The last attribute that I'd like to share with you would be that God is all-powerful. God is able to bring about everything that he chooses. He has no limitations. Job 42 verse 2 says that God can do all things and nothing can stop him. I want to share with you that I'm in this condition today. God could heal me immediately if he wanted to. But God plan for my life is the best for me because he's given me up opportunities to meet people and share my faith who I've never had would have had the opportunity to speak to. I love the Lord. I know He loves me. And I know He, he has only good for me. So I can honestly say that these are the most happiest days of my life. I thank the Lord for my wife, Dottie, and for all who've been praying and all the great care that I get. Before we pray, I would like us to consider what we spoke about tonight, about the Lord Jesus and our relationship with him. If you haven't made that very important decision to ask for your sins to be given, forgiven and for this Holy Spirit to come and reside in your life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, how grateful I am to be able to do this 
Lord, we thank you for all your attributes and all that you do and all of the love and mercy that you show us each and every day of our lives. Lord, my prayer is if there's anyone who would like to accept Jesus, may they simply ask for forgiveness of their sins and invite Jesus into their heart. If this is something you did tonight, please talk to your coaches or Pastor Terry or anyone to let them know this great and wonderful decision you have made. Lord, bless the whole, whole award tonight, tonight. Bless the speaker. And we just pray that all we say and do will bring honor and glory to our wonderful Savior, the blessed Lord Jesus. In his name we ask, with thanksgiving in our hearts, amen. It's a take. <laughs>